All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to Seller Tools. Uh, we just launched this amazing tool platform. Uh, I want to kind of walk you through all the features, and then at the end of this video, we're going to dive straight into the tool itself. So first up, what is the problem that every Amazon seller is facing? Um, I've, I've talked to a ton of Amazon sellers, and I hear the same exact thing. Um, they seem to be focusing 80% of their time on uh, customer service and inventory control. To me, coming from an eight-figure seller, that those two things are the least important of the things that you should be focusing on. For us, uh, we focus 80% of our time on keywords and advertising, keywords and advertising, because the right keywords is going to give you the right listing, the right listing is going to give you the right advertising, and the right advertising is going to give you the right organic sales, uh, which is going to keep you right at the top. Um, so what you want, what we notice is that sellers have the wrong data, they're not tracking, they're using tools that you know track a couple hundred keywords, um, they only focus on the top keywords, but they're, they're completely ignoring the other 10,000 keywords uh, that are out there for their product. Um, so they spend a lot of time, they spin the wheels, um, and they do a lot of work manually. They use a lot of spreadsheets, um, and they kind of really don't know the direction they want to go. They only hear what they should be doing based upon what they hear in the community. So that's where we come in. Uh, we really wanted to create a, a software platform that actually give you the answers that you're looking for and not just data. Uh, the worst thing is when you just get data you know, you had this many impressions. Well, what does that even mean? Is that good? Is that bad? So why even listen to us? Um, so we're a group of about eight figure Amazon sellers. Um, we have quite a few companies uh, between us and we do quite a bit of money on just Amazon. We don't uh, utilize anything outside of Amazon. We love Amazon. Um, we started the same um, point as most of you guys did. Uh, some of you guys are part of the amazing community. Um, a lot of us are part of the amazing community. Um, so, so I think we all started around the same time, you know, maybe four years ago, three years ago, and uh, we just really analyzed what Amazon was doing, and we understood what Amazon was doing, and we just wanted to uh, just kind of give Amazon what they wanted so we could excel and explode, go up in the rankings, get the reviews we needed, and, and really start making the money that the major brands are making. So the first thing I, I noticed that, that uh, if you aren't just focusing your time on, on inventory and customer service, which again, I believe is the least important part of your job, once you source a good product and, and put you know, a $2 an hour worker in charge of your customer service, as long as they, they're trained well, they should be able to handle those, those 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 emails a day. So the next thing we notice is sellers focus on the wrong keywords. Um, they start using tools uh, that, that the old professionals used to use like Market Samurai, or um, uh, Scrapebox or, or the, any of the other tools that generate suggestions or traffic from things like Walmart, eBay, uh, Google Keyword Planner, and, and other Amazon tools, which just kind of just make up the traffic. Um, just a little heads up, Amazon never gives the exact number uh, of traffic that comes from a keyword. They, they never have and they never will. Uh, but they do give other information um, which we communicate with them on the back end. And we able to, to suck out a lot of information and really get a good idea of how much traffic is actually behind a keyword, okay? So first, we, we choose the right keywords. We only focus on keywords that Amazon tells us are important, right? So we don't use uh, Google Keyword Tools or any other tools to kind of mishmash keywords together. Um, we only focus on, on keywords that give us at least 100 impressions. Um, if they give us less than 100 impressions, we actually mark that in our tool as a zero. And for us, we just completely delete that keyword. Um, so we, we focus on every single keyword that gives us more than 100 impressions. We don't just focus on the top 10, the top 20, top 30. We focus on the te top 2,000, 3,000 for, for a particular keyword. Another misconception is that these keyword tools tell us that you know this keyword gives us 20,000 impressions a month across Amazon, let's just say for a moment. Well, what they don't tell you is that impression is relative to your listing, okay? And I'm gonna dive into it a little bit more deep, deeply, um, but it's not just like a rel relative score. It's actually, Amazon will, will not give you traffic or give you less traffic because of how loosely or tightly you are related to that keyword. And we're gonna go into some examples down here. So this is our first example, a Coke versus uh, silicone spatula. 
the two products could not be more dissimilar than each other. Okay, so in the first example, we have our keyword that our customers punch in is silicone spatula. Okay, the first ASIN is a can of Coke, and the second one is a spatula. Right, since our spatula is very relevant to silicone spatula, Amazon will give us a ton of traffic. All right. In the next example, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a huge keyword. Coca-Cola gets millions of impressions on Amazon uh, every single month. Just because you have millions of keywords and you're relevant in terms of, of if you take Coca-Cola and put it in the back end of your keywords, doesn't mean that you're suddenly going to get millions of keywords because Amazon knows that you sell a spatula, right? They take a look at your entire listing and say, okay, what is this product? Even though Coca-Cola is in the listing, I know that this, this ASIN is a spatula. Therefore, you may notice in your advertising that you get less impressions. You think you should be getting those impressions, but you're not getting the impressions. You know, you are selling a spatula, you're bidding on a spatula, but Amazon says that your product isn't a spatula. Why? Well, probably because you have other keywords in there that you shouldn't have. So that was an extreme version. This is a, a kind of more similar uh, example. So you have two kind of similar products, a water bottle and a canteen. Okay. And the customer punches in water bottle. Water bottle, of course, is going to get more traffic than the canteen ASIN. Even though the canteen is very loosely related to water bottle, it is a bottle. You do put water in it and you do carry it around. Amazon knows that canteen deserves less traffic from the keywords water bottle and vice versa. If the customer punches in canteen, water bottle will still get a lot more traffic because of the, the product that it is and that there's so much less volume for canteen. So since there's less volume for canteen, Amazon has to decide which way it's going to go. So it does give a little bit more to canteen than water bottle. But in our previous example, water bottle is there's so much traffic there that the word canteen is almost going to get no volume because the, the competition of ASINs. So how do we solve this problem? So first we compare, we compare your product listening to what Amazon says your product is about. Okay. Then we ask Amazon about every single phrase that you put in our tool. If you put water bottle, insulated water bottle, water bottle or plastic in our tool, we're going to compare those keywords to your listing. We're not just going to give you some data that, 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 comes out of some tool or some number or somewhere because that data is relative to your product individually. Then we record that into seller tools and actually show it to you because no two listings are the same. And I say that with a smile because of course, if you have two of the same ASINs, of course it's the same, same product. Or if you do a parent child, then of course it's the same product. So when I say no two products are the same, if they copy each other's keywords word for word, then of course they are the same, even though they may be different brands or different products. Then we present that keyword phrases with a volume score inside of our tool. And since you update your tool and Amazon's updates your keywords, Amazon algorithm updates every four days, we're going to go ahead and update the volume based upon a couple different things. One, volume may change because your listing may have changed. If you went ahead and changed your listing to get more keywords indexed, you may have lowered your, your potential volume. So we're going to update that weekly and show you on a graph what your volume score is. Let's just say maybe there's a trend. Maybe you sell a trending product. So that, that volume may be important today at, you know, let's just say it's 20,000 impressions. But during the summer, it could be 200,000 impressions. So again, this is why the other tools don't really give you the right information. So we should only get the information from Amazon. So we, we grab the information weekly, we present it. So you know that that volume is that volume for you, just your listing during that given, given period of time. So as I said before, the 80-20 most focused on customer service inventory. Again, we focus on nothing but advertising and keywords. It used to be that we would redo our listings every three months from almost from scratch. We would of course use the same data, but there's new competitors, competitors out there. There's new keywords out there. There's no sizes out there. There's no colors out there. The market itself shifts weekly, monthly, yearly. So your listing needs to update just as often as that. So we installed automatic harvesting. And what that means is that we take all your keywords that, that you've already put into the system. 
and we expand on those. We flip them around, we, we get you more keywords, and then we show you those keywords. We notify you when there's no more keywords, and you can go through and choose the ones you want to keep and get rid of the ones you don't want to keep. This alone saves us thousands of hours a year. It used to take us two to three days to make the perfect listing that we were 100% happy with, all the way from beginning to end. Now we have it down to about 50 minutes with the tool. Other sites limit you to a couple hundred keywords, a couple thousand keywords. Uh, we don't do that. And, and the reason why we don't do that is because we see so much value over lower volume keywords. So everyone else is focusing on the top 10 keywords, you know, water bottle, insulated water bottle, plastic water bottle. Well, the, they're ignoring all the other long ones. What about water bottle, plastic pink or, or blue or, or broken or whatever the keyword may be? There's so much volume there. So of course, water bottle gets 60,000 impressions a month, let's just say. But what about all the other keywords to get 500 impressions a month? Imagine if you rank for all of those. But how can you rank for all of them if you if you don't track where you are for all those keywords? So that's why we give you 20,000 keyword limit so that you can add as many keywords as you want as long as they're targeted for your product. And you know exactly where you stand for, for lower end keywords and higher end keywords. Another common issue we find is, are you indexed by Amazon? And what we mean by that is that just because you put a keyword or a keyword phrase in your listing doesn't mean that you're automatically indexed by Amazon. So therefore, you should definitely do a kind of an acid test. And it's very easy to do. You can just go to Amazon.com, take your ASIN, and put your keyword or phrase after that. And it'll tell you if you're indexed or not. It'll have either a one or a zero. But th that's a lot of work to do by hand. And I know there's there's some tools out there on the market that maybe check your back end keywords and charge you, you know, five, ten bucks or something. But that that's still just a drop in the bucket. So we actually check every single phrase. So if you have 20,000 phrases, we check them all. So even if you do a massive overhaul on your listing and update your listing and you feel really good about it, you can click a button with our, in, in our tool and we will go through and recheck for index all over again. If you sat down and checked your own index for 20,000 keywords, it would probably take you a week or maybe you have an army of outsourcers, but you can do this in one click. Yet another problem I see with Amazon sellers when they attempt to get into advertising and, and keeping track of what keywords are important is that they look at the same exact data day in and day out. It, this is kind of similar to a, a blacklist or a negative list inside advertising. Is that as soon as you see a keyword in our tool and you feel that you're not relevant for it, let's just say it's uh, plastic and you sell a metal water bottle. Well, since it's plastic, maybe you don't want to come up for that keyword. So you archive it. Well, we go ahead and take every single keyword. Let's just say there's 150 of them that have the keyword plastic in it. We go ahead and archive those completely. So you never, ever, ever have to see those keywords again. So when we go and harvest keywords for you, we only show you keywords that you don't have on your radar, that you don't have in your listing, that you don't have in our tool. Once you have the right keywords, and the right negative keywords and the right volume, you can determine what keywords are the most important, whether they be keywords or phrases, and then you can jump into the listing manager. And the listing manager automatically shows you the keywords that's relevant to you, that are in your list, inside seller tools, but not in your listing. So maybe uh, since it's a brand new listing, you have you know 1,200 keywords that can be put in your listing. Or maybe since it's an existing listing, you only have 10 left over. So we show you those 10, and now you all you have to do is copy and paste out those 10 and put them where you want. Maybe you want to put the high volume ones up at top in your title or in your back end. So you, you can check to see only the, the sevens, eights, nines, and tens, which are the highest volume keywords. And you can copy and paste those and make sure that those are in your title, or maybe you want them in your bullet points. So we actually designed the tool so that you can quickly get your information, copy your information out, save your listing, and have as many versions as you want. So that's pretty much the long and short of the current version of Seller Tools. And we have a ton more tools coming out, but we're really excited about this version just because of how many hours it saves. You can cancel all those other subscriptions, you know, stop paying for, for 400 or 4,000 keywords tracked. I mean, you should be tracking everything. Uh, your harvesting should be the, 
it should be automatic. Uh, the tool should work for you. It shouldn't just be a place that is nothing more than a glorified spreadsheet. So that's the it of this video, and I'm going to jump in and make another video that's going to dive right into the tool itself.